Hi, my name is Tina Tuck, and this is the Forensics Unit at the Alachua County Sheriff's Office. Come with me and I'll show you some of what we do. My name is Tina Tuck, and I am a latent print examiner at the Alachua County Sheriff's Office in the Forensics Unit. Um, I was a former crime scene investigator and just recently got promoted to the latent print examiner position. Um, as a crime scene investigator, I did actually go to crime scenes and document and collect evidence. One of the big pieces of evidence we collect are what we call latent fingerprints. A latent print is actually a hidden print that needs some form of processing in order to make it visible. So I'm gonna show you right now, we had somebody touch this piece of tile and I'm gonna go ahead and use one of our powder processes in order so we can visualize it. So what I'll do is start with gloves. One of the main reasons that we wear gloves is so that we don't leave any of our fingerprints on a crime scene. So this powder that I'm using is called magnetic powder. And the magnetic powder is used with this wand that has a magnet in it so I can add as much or as little magnetic powder as I need. And you can see when I release it, it all goes right back to where uh, it started. So I'm going to use some of this magnetic powder and let's see what we can find over on this piece of tile. So I'm already starting to see some of those latent um, ridges. Some of these, this latent print is starting to develop. So I'm just gonna keep processing it to make it a little darker so that some of these ridges will show up better. So that way I can, I'll be able to analyze and compare it as long as it's dark enough. And we also have a program which we use Photoshop. So if sometimes, if the crime scene investigators don't get enough powder on this, we can darken it up using Photoshop. And this is what we are left with. So once we process at a crime scene, I then have to use tape because I have to be able to get the print from the object back to the station. So while I'm there, I will use this clear tape. And I'm gonna start with just the fingers so I'll lay the tape down. And we rub this down so we get all the air bubbles out and we're trying to get as many ridges as possible onto the tape. Okay, so this is what we call a latent lift card. So we would put our case number, where we received the, the latent lift from. So on that, I would say received from piece of tile. Then we just transfer it to the card. And then this is what was transferred from the tile. So once this gets turned in from the scene, that is when John and I will check this out of evidence and we will look at it and determine if it is of value or not of value. Uh, once we make that determination, we will start the process looking at um, victim elimination prints first, whoever is supposed to be at the residence, um, if we happen to be processing a residence. If these don't belong to the victim, we can run it through the APHIS station and hopefully that person would be in our system that we would be able to say these belong to so-and-so. So this is our evidence processing room. Once we go to a scene and collect evidence, this is where we would come back and process for DNA or prints. Um, the table behind me is where we would lay things out in order to take digital photographs before we start our processing. Um, we also collect swabs for DNA, which could be anything from touch DNA, from something they think you might have touched, um, or clothing, or even um, we swab firearms. Um, so that's all part of the DNA processing. And this would also be where we have all kinds of different powders that we can use in order to try to visualize latent prints. So 
So this room is where we process our digital images. Um, so this is our digital imaging station. Uh, we have a camera that we set up on a copy stand. Um, so that way when we process evidence, we would place it below it in order to take pictures of it. The kind of evidence we would do this for is if we use any type of chemical and we have to use an alternate light source in order to view it. Um, we also, when we super glue fingerprints, we take pictures of that first uh, before we do any chemical processing. Um, with the super glue and dye stains, you can't use, it's not like the powder where you would use a lift tape and lift it and turn it onto another card. So this is just for when we need to take pictures of uh, chemically processed evidence. So this is what we call the forensics bay. And this is actually a garage that's attached to our forensics unit. And this is where we bring vehicles that were involved in if they were stolen or if they just need to be processed in, in an inside environment instead of being out in the open. So we have processing supplies over here where we have everything we need from DNA swabs and brushes and powders in order to process cars. We also have bags, so if we have to collect evidence out of the vehicle, we have something clean to put them in. Hi, I'm John Swartz, and I am a latent print examiner for the Alachua County Sheriff's Office uh, here in Florida. Uh, a latent print examiner is just a fancy word for uh, I look at fingerprints. So I look at fingerprints from crime scenes, and then I look at fingerprints that we've actually rolled somebody or somehow we've collected those prints off that person. Uh, I work in the forensic unit, so we have uh, six crime scene investigators that actually go out to the crime scenes and they process for fingerprints. They also collect DNA evidence and other uh, evidence that will help the detectives along with the investigation. Uh, they do the dirty work. I just sit in the office and, and try, to, try to identify prints. Uh, they're the ones that are the hard workers. I'm not so much. Anyways. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about fingerprints. So if you know that we have fingerprints um, on the underside of our fingers, our palms, the soles of our feet, and our toes. So it, it's a specialized skin that sometimes I refer to as friction ridge skin. So it allows us to grab things and hold them better rather than just a slick surface. Um, so these fingerprints are unique. So they form before we are born and then they last throughout our natural lifetime until we, we pass away and the body decomposes. Um, so, but they're unique to you and you alone. Uh, no two people have, have ever been ha found to have the same print. So we can use that to help us identify people from a, from a crime scene, to help the detectives try to figure out who did what. Um, so right now I'm just gonna show you how we collect fingerprints, kind of the old fashioned way, this is just with ink and paper. So, I have a volunteer, ta -da. Deputy Gallup has so graciously volunteered for me to do this. And this is too big, so we're just gonna do it this way. So, I have ink here, just a thin layer of ink that I have rolled out on this plate. And now I'm gonna start with his right hand, and I'm just gonna take his hand and apply a thin layer of ink. You can see that there's a thin layer of ink on there. And now I'm gonna transfer it to this fingerprint card. And you can see that I've now recorded that. So if you think of a rubber stamp, I don't know if you've ever played with a rubber stamp or you've seen them, you take that rubber stamp, it has raised and lowered portions, you put it in ink and you transfer it to a, a card or a piece of paper, you can read what that stamp said. Fingerprints are a lot like that. There's raised and lowered portions. So I've now put a little bit of ink on the raised portion of that print, and now I've transferred it to a card. Now I can read it. It makes it easier for me to compare when I can see it like this. Okay, so we've gotten a fingerprint from the crime scene, but we have no idea who that print belongs to. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna use this tool. This tool, which is called APHIS, which is Automated Fingerprint Identification System. Um, so that allows me to run a latent print, an unknown print, through this system to try to find somebody. If they're in there, and I'm lucky, I'm going to find them. So, uh, I have to set this up. Okay, so I have to capture this. So 
I'm gonna just use the camera. And there's my fingerprint. There is my unknown print from a crime scene. That looks good. I'm gonna send that over to the imaging part and I'm gonna find some points. First I'm gonna say this is a lift. It's a whirl pattern. Um, Cause there's, you know, telling, telling the computer what kind of pattern to look for kind of makes its it search a little bit easier. So I'm gonna say this is a whirl cause it's kind of look, looks like a target. And I think that that'll help the computer. And then I tell it, okay, you find, you find the points because it's gonna be more accurate than I am. It's gonna be more consistent. So I usually like the computer to do this first. And then I clean it up, because sometimes it finds stuff that I don't even know what it's looking at. All right, so everything looks pretty good. I don't need to add anything. I'll add this one over here, just so you show, see what it looks like when I add something. Aha, uh -huh. okay, so the yellow says, I did that, the green is what the computer did. It's a world pattern, it looks good. I've got 28 points or minutia, and I'm gonna create my search. And I am not, I could look through the FBI, but I'm not going to in this case. And I could look through the state, but I'm not gonna do that either. I am just gonna look through the Alachua County database. So if you watch CSI, you'll see when I launch this into the computer, it's gonna go crazy. So here's what happens. Ready? Ready? And, oh, that's pretty boring. It doesn't really work like CSI. So right now, that print is just going into the computer and it's looking at other prints that look like that and it's trying to match up those points. So it's not gonna waste time doing all that flashy stuff like they show on TV, because this is pretty boring in itself. But in reality, it's doing a lot of work behind the scenes that I don't know what's going on. And eventually it'll tell me, hey, I think this is somebody you should look at. Maybe it's a man. I've launched it and now it's here. It's ready for me to look at. So I'm gonna click on that case that I ran. In this case, it's just a test. Here's the latent print. And so now I'm gonna look at all these candidates here to see if I can match it up. And here's my first candidate. And I'm thinking, well, this looks pretty good. Uh, I can click on this and it will say, hey, these are the points that we agree with. So all these blue things, the computer says, hey, this is, this is important, this is a match. It could be a match, but you need to look at it a little bit closer. So then I start looking for things like, oh, look at this, look at this little dot. The dot is there, the dot is there. I'm thinking, hey, this is looking good. So once I say, hey, I think this is gonna be a match, then I actually have to print out a fingerprint card, and then compare it using magnifiers with my eyes. And then, then I just look at it and I say, yep, that's it. And then once I determine that I think it's a hit, then I give it to our other examiner and she has to look at it. She has to agree with my analysis and my conclusion. If we don't agree, we're not gonna tell anybody. But if we agree, then we can tell them, hey, here's your guy, go talk.